It was a record payout. The state of North Carolina, the city of Concord, and the State Bureau of Investigation paying Ronnie Long $25 million after he spent 40... Oh, the white woman waiting for him when he gets out. It's always a white woman. <laughs> <sighs> for years behind bars for a crime he didn't commit. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jane Monreal. I'll be sitting down with WCNC Charlotte reporter Michelle Bowden in a moment. She just had an exclusive conversation with Ronnie Long now that the case is settled. But first, let's take a look at back, uh, look back at some of Michelle's reporting from the last few years. Ronnie Long is serving out an 80 year sentence here in this prison. Now we weren't allowed to bring cameras in, but we were able to record his voice. And he says after 44 years behind bars, he still has faith that he will someday walk out a free man. I hope every day that will keep me scribed. No, I ain't read no better. Ronnie Long's attorney says his client has already spent way too long in prison for a crime he says he didn't commit. And he says waiting for a court date that may not happen anytime soon. At this point, he says it's just not fair and his client should be let out of prison. A majority of the justices agreed to hear Ronnie's case. The president of North Carolina's NAACP has helped free two other men. Their convictions overturned. Now he's setting his sights on Ronnie Long. This is truly unprecedented. We're talking 15 judges, the full federal appeals court for the Fourth Circuit, plus two attorneys arguing all of this remotely and all of this to decide if Ronnie Long could finally go free. Liberty means something. You don't just take away a person's freedom easily. It means something. And in the meantime, Ronnie Long is serving time in a prison where the virus is running rampant. Certainly there is an urgency to his release to protect his health. This is the biggest. <laughs> so this guy. Uh, so what see. essentially happened? That, I think they're going to get to it. So but basically it just shows that they've been. Uh, salute to Marvin. He says violently knocking on the door. Yeah, yeah. The cop was the cop didn't knock like a police. He knocked. He violently knocked on the door step yet in this case three judges outright saying they believe long is innocent and should be freed immediately but there are still some legal hurdles to conquer ronnie long will soon be a free man he was emotional you could just hear the happiness through the phone hey look it is, it may, i'm lost for word because see this is something i've been scribing for all along I asked Ronnie after 44 years behind prison walls if there was anything he was afraid of. The world has changed so much since he went to prison. Technology, anything? He said, Michelle, I'm a survivor. I'll figure it out. While Ronnie Long is a free man, this pardon is important for two reasons. Number one, it would officially declare him innocent in the eyes of the law. And number two, it is the only way for Mr. Long to get any sort of relief from the state after he spent 44 years of his life behind bars. That made way for the 65-year-old to get compensation from the state. He just got his $750,000 check. I ain't said that. No, I'm not. <laughs> he did that shit. Wrongfully convicted. <laughs> Whatever they say, wrongfully convicted, that means they did it, but there was a loophole. That's the same. That's the same response we're going to get after reparation. <laughs> I'm gonna start shaking tree. The suit claims the detectives on the case targeted Long, then fabricated evidence and hid evidence. Then the suit claims they. So the the, the detectives targeted him, fabricated evidence, and hid evidence covered it up for decades. Attorneys for Long filed the civil suit back in May, but just recently added some new defendants, SBI agents they say they just learned were involved in the evidence gathering process. This is the biggest settlement in North Carolina's history for a wrongful conviction, one of the biggest ever in the U.S., but Long says it's the apology, something that's very rare in these cases that means so much. All right, Michelle here. Now, thank you for being here. And so obvious question, but how does Ronnie feel now that uh, this has been settled? It's interesting. You would think a lot of people anyway would think that this is justice. This case is over. He got $25 million. That's a huge sum of money. But he says it's actually not justice because of so many of the things that happened in the time that he was in prison. He lost his a lot of family members. He lost his mother, his father, um, brother, sister. Um, he also says the way the payout works is not fair. We're going to get into that in a little bit. But the, the long and short of it, and you saw some of it in the piece there, is that the state initially only paid him $750,000. That's because of a state law that 
actually caps out that number even when you're exonerated. So technically, he was only paid for 15 of the 44 years that he was in prison. And that law, that statute is still in place. And that's something that's why he says he feels like it's still not justice because he he had to fight. He had to file a civil settlement to get the twenty five million dollars. Let's hear it from himself. You didn't put, I didn't, you didn't put me in the penitentiary wrongfully. You put me in the penitentiary intentionally. So it's a difference between wrongful and intentional. Actually, nothing happened. Ronnie Long there pointing out nothing happened to the people who he says intentionally put him behind bars, targeting him. They hit Evans. Even after it was clear that there were issues with his case, the former Cabarrus County DA got in the way. Issues with the case or he didn't do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're not saying he didn't do it. You got to listen to the language. Wrongfully convicted, issues with the case, hid evidence. The, the cops could have, like, not presented all the evidence or the DA could have not presented all the evidence in court and you could have still fucking did it. I want to hear that he didn't do it. Salute to um, Baker Fresh. He says, Lucas switched after the shooting in, like, Sac... Oh, you're talking about... um. What's that cat's name? God damn. I remember that cat in Sacramento. Um, he had the white, he had the Filipino girl. Once the black girls found out, he had the Filipino girl they stopped protesting for. Um, where the guy was asleep in a car with the gun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you did that for a while ago, I remember. Yeah. Woke up. Oh, no, that's a different one. He did where the guy was sleeping in the car and woke up by a megaphone and was gunned down. Okay, so yeah. Ladies and Lucas, man. Um, yikes. Way of his ultimate release. Take a listen to what he says. If you got a chief of police and he's tampering with a jury list, if you got detectives that plant evidence because that green line, green. Did, did you do it or not, bro brother? Did you Bro do it? Look how old he is. You cannot compete with this. You just can't. Yeah, no, nah, but I, I want to hear anyone say he didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? He didn't do it. Green the bog and I, like I said, I had never seen that before in my life until they showed it to me in court. You plant evidence, you commit perjury, you destroy evidence, and you knew. With all the things that you were doing intensely, you sending me to death row. You were trying to kill me. And again, so when he talks about that, he's very concerned that no one ever chased the detectives in the case that went after him. The former DA hasn't faced any sort of retribution because of this. So that's one of the big concerns that he has. In this, I want to hear the story of this, man. Um, like, what is the Ronnie Long story? What happened? What happened? Let me see if I, I think I might have saved that. I might have had that. Let me see. Um, what happened with our brother Ronnie Long, man? Oh no, that's the one. I was, that's the one we was watching. Um, what happened with our brother Ronnie Long? What happened? What happened, man? What's the story? Um, you got that glider right there. Look at that. Yeah, him. got that white woman on him, man. You, you oh, tear man. that glider shit up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Conjugal visits and everything. Let me see. Okay, let's see this one. Welcome back to CBS This Morning. As nationwide protests push for racial justice in this country, a federal appeals court is expected to rule any day now on whether to overturn a 44-year-old rape conviction. It happened in 1976. There were angry protests in Concord, North Carolina, after the conviction of a young black man. His name is Ronnie Wallace Long. He was accused of raping a white woman. Now lawyers for Ronnie Long, who accuse investigators of lying about evidence, are trying to write what they say is a wrongful conviction. Listen, are you, listen, I'm on pin, listen, I'm waiting for someone to say he didn't do it, man. Like, it's it, like, come on, somebody say Ronnie Long did not do this crime. They keep saying wrongfully convicted, evidence here, da 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 da. You know what I mean? Like, people don't talk like that when they didn't do nothing. If my wife comes down here and says, man, um, you got your dick sucked at the strip club last night, I'm not going to say, man, you you fabricating evidence, man. <laughs> 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 no, man. I'm like, 
like, man, I, I was, I was I did my live stream last night. I wasn't at no fucking strip club last night. You want to see my fucking live stream? You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just weird when they don't say when people. You know what I'm saying? When people don't say, yeah, and I and I doubt in any of these videos they're gonna go through the evidence. You really gotta dig it up yourself. No, nah, they they usually do. They usually tell you what, not the evidence, but they tell you the story. Like you know what is alleged to have happened. Um, you know, let's see, man. Um, Conviction. Aaron Moriarty spoke to Long and his attorney about the case. Aaron, good morning. This sounds like a very, very upsetting and disturbing. Another story. white woman. This is a very tough story. Good morning, Gail. That young man is now 64, and he says he never had a chance at a fair trial in what was back then and mostly. So never had a chance at a fair trial. That still doesn't mean you didn't do it. Brigada community. So you got a young black man in 1976 in front of a white student for a sexual assault. Yeah, but did you do it, brother? Did you do it or not, man? Did you do it or not? Ronnie Long was 20 years old in 1976 when he was arrested in Concord, North Carolina for the rape of a 54-year-old widow, a white woman by the name of Sarah Bost. They got the wrong man. Ronnie Long is absolutely innocent of this crime. Jamie okay, so this guy says that. He finally, somebody said that he's innocent. Okay, so now let's hear why he's innocent. Professor at the Duke Law Innocence Project. He says Long, who had been a talented high school athlete, was facing... Yeah, look at that man's height on his jump shot. God damn. That motherfucker was getting up on his jump shot, man athlete was facing a minor trespassing charge when cops asked the victim. So he was facing a minor trespassing charge. It's just a minor trespassing. It wasn't a serious because, you know, you have serious trespassing charges and minor trespassing charges. He was facing a minor trespassing charge. He says Long, who had been a talented high school athlete, was facing a minor trespassing charge when cops asked the victim to come to court that day. They dressed her in a disguise, brought her to the courtroom. She sat there for an hour and a half in the presence of Mr. Long without identifying him. When Long's name was called, she identified him as the person who assaulted her. And she later testified that she selected him because he looked most similar to her attacker of all the people who were present in the courtroom that day. But the victim had originally described her attacker as a light-colored black man, which Long is clearly not. And while a sh mm, okay, okay, so she described him as a light-colored black man. Okay, so that's that 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 sounds good in this guy's favor. Shoe print found outside the victim's home had a similar tread. It could not be matched to shoes owned by Long. There so shoe print. They didn't have DNA evidence at this time. They didn't have DNA evidence at this time. So they would rely on forensic evidence like this. A shoe print matched his. He had a, he had a minor trespassing charge and a shoe print. And the woman identified him. But her identification of him was different than the description of the person she says raped her. There was also clothing, including a black leather coat found in Long's car that looked like what the rapist wore. It was a ubiquitous piece of clothing for black males at the time, in part because the movie Shaft had come out a few years prior. At trial, Long didn't take the stand, but several alibi witnesses... Hold on, wait a second. You're being charged of rape of a white woman in south of north carolina man in the 70s man which we know means absolutely nothing but you're being charged with the rape of a white woman and you don't you you're facing what a hundred years and you don't take the stand what do you guys think about that
Yeah, that's, sometimes that's a strategy they take. I don't know. I'm not too convinced one way or the other. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It is a strategy. Yeah, it definitely is a strategy not to take the stand. But in a wrongful conviction, though, like, like when you, I mean, like when you didn't do it, like it's, it's one thing to not, because a lot of times, most times, God did it. Like, let's be honest, man. 90, 95% of the time, 98% of the time, the person did it. But in a case where you weren't there, you've never seen this woman before. I don't know. This is testified to seeing him at the time of the rape. Every so moment. several people gave alibis and said they saw him at the time of the rapes. So they said he, he couldn't have done the rape because they saw him. This is testified to seeing him at the time of the rape. Every moment of his day had been accounted for. The all-white jury convicted Long of rape and burglary. He was given two life sentences. I feel like somebody had hit me with a bat. His older sister, Linda Smith, was there for the verdict. Everything just fell down because I just knew I wasn't expecting that. She wasn't the only one. Concord erupted. Oh, my God. It was a terrible sight. They went crazy. They was breaking one. <laughs> what do y'all think about this? And then there was a riot, of course. I just want to know why the fuck they picked him up. Like, they're not telling you why they thought. Exactly. That's what they're not telling you in all this. And that's that's the well, part they, they always leave out. They did say he had a minor trespassing charge, but they're not telling us why <laughs> he was. Because people get trespass charges all the time, but they're not. All, they're not. Every crime you commit, you're not taken in front of some victim of a rape. And right. Ask if, you, if you did a rape. Like, right. Like and like, where was the trespass? Out. If I go in my neighbor's yard tonight and they he calls the police and the, and the police come and arrest me for trespassing, they're just gonna take me down to the fucking drunk tank and sit me in there and, and let me go in the morning. They're not gonna fucking say put me in front of whatever woman got raped in this city recently and say that you do it. <laughs> hey ma'am, is this guy that raped you? Like, I mean, it just, it's just, it, they leave so much stuff out, man. It's just crazy, man. And then the Innocence Project being behind it also makes the credibility shot. Crazy. They was breaking windows. They was turning over police cars. They was running out through the street. Jamie, Ms. Boss went to her death believing that Ronnie Long was the man who attacked her. Could she have been that wrong? She could have, and there's very clear examples of people believing with high levels of confidence that they have identified the right attacker, only to later be proven wrong. And then, about 30 years after his conviction, Long's attorneys learned that investigators had tested more than a dozen pieces of evidence and had hidden the results. They not only did they hide... So they tested a dozen pieces of evidence and hid the results. Hide evidence, but then they took the stand while under oath and lied about the evidence. Did the defense at trial know that there were 43 fingerprints found at the crime scene that didn't match Ronnie Long? They did not. Did the defense know that there had actually been a rape kit taken and evidence taken from the victim? They did not. Did the defense know that a hair that was found at the crime scene did not match Ronnie Long? They did. Yeah, but like, listen, there's hairs in my house from the people who lived here before us. There's hairs from visitors we've had over here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and, and this is this is where the like, let's just assume what they say is true. It's like, yeah, this is probably going to get you off, but like. He said 43 fingerprints that didn't match his. Are they her fingerprints? Are they all one person's fingerprints? Like, they just say 43 to make it sound like there were 43 different people there. And and here's the thing. Was one of them his? Because they know they, 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 they're being That's very true, too. Because they said 43 weren't his, but they never said one of them was. They never said there were 46 taken and three of them were his. 
they kind of did because they could have easily just said his fingerprints weren't found on the scene. Right? Yeah. Instead of, instead of there were 43 other fingerprints that weren't his. Because remember, he's never seen this woman in life. He doesn't know what they're talking about. Like, hey, man, what's this all about? Was there 43 other fingerprints on the scene that weren't his or his fingerprints weren't on the scene? What's easier to say? Defense know that a hair that was found at the crime scene did not match Ronnie Long. They did not. My reaction was, like, oh, my brother's coming home now. They done found evidence, but they still ain't let him out. Long's only child, Carlos Spears, was three when his dad went to prison. Wow. He's now 47. Well, I want the world to know that Cabarrus County locked up an innocent man, and they need to go ahead and give him justice. But in May, at a federal appeals court, the North Carolina Attorney General's office argued that none of the evidence hidden at trial would have changed the verdict. Chris. Okay, so they ruled that, yeah, okay, whatever, but he still did it. Um, I want to hear, I want to see, like, what the, the story, man? What's the story? What happened? So hard to find out, man. Um, let's see this one. This this might be one. Let's see this one. Black man, white victim, white judge, white. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. They, <laughs> like, you know, what I'm saying like he hasn't what said. I did not do it. Press one. Press one if you find that alarming, man. I'm just, you know, I watch a lot of Columbo, man. Columbo is my favorite show, right? And one thing about Columbo, man, that I always love about Columbo, he'll let you talk. You know what I'm saying? He'll listen. He'll sit there and just listen to you. You know what I mean? And he'll walk out the door and then be like, one more thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it just, it's just weird, man. It's bizarre the way, they, like, it's just not, like, if, if I didn't do something, I wouldn't be talking about white jury, white this. I mean, like, I didn't fucking do it. Also, white jury, white this, 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 this. Black man. White victim, white judge, white DA, 12 white jurors, 1976. You tell me I had a fair trial. What I had was a modernized lynching. Hi, everyone. Today I'm speaking with Ronnie Long, who spent 44 years in car. Oh, fucking tiger. Yo, <laughs> tiger. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Oh, God. Our favorite dish, man. <laughs> Incarcerated for a crime he didn't commit. Ronnie's case was actually recently covered on the true crime podcast, Unjust and Unsolved, which tells really heart-wrenching stories about different people like Ronnie who were put behind bars for crimes they didn't commit and whose crimes that still actually remain unsolved. Thank you again, Ronnie, for being here with us uh, and sharing your story. 44 years for a crime you didn't commit is is a sentence uh, up that it, it, it's, it's a nightmare, isn't it? To live 44 years inside an uh, institution, yeah, that's exactly what it is. I'll give okay. him that. I so, will give him that. I got, I'm reading the University of Michigan law website and getting a little bit more. So the reason they picked him was apparently a, a, he was the sub. Welcome back to CBS this morning. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. He was the suspect of another rape that happened in D.C. and they found his social security card at the crime scene. 
but they didn't uh, they didn't have a positive identification from the assailant. Stop. What 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 crime scene did they find in Social Security at? The one in DC or the one in Concord, North Carolina? Not the one in Concord, the one in DC. So, so there was a rape. Found his so, so they, he was already a suspect. suspect. In right, and then what? And the place he was arrested for trash, pa- trespassing was a was a public park that was a mile away from this crime. So so he. That's a huge piece of evidence to leave out. Oh no, well let's not say evidence. That's a huge piece of the story for us to have watched three or four videos on this and no one told us. Press one. To have watched three or four videos on this story and no one told us that he was a suspect in another rape in another city. And <laughs> you know, that's yo, know, that is criminal journalism, man. That's criminal. Wow. Go ahead. Go on, man. Go on. Yeah, so so they they suspected it to be him, and apparently she she so the guy came into her house, and the way she described it is he had a knife to her neck, asked for her money, and kept trying to push her head down while he I mean he took her to another place in the house to rape her, rip the clothes off and everything, and then kept pushing her head down saying, Don't look at me. And she did describe him as a as a as a lighter yellowish not normal looking black man but when she was taken to the courthouse like they said and people came in she immediately identified him so made it i I don't i don't you know that but that yeah that whole thing with the social security card i can't believe they didn't do anything more with that but they said he lost his wallet or some shit it's like i don't know how your social security card ends up on a rape scene but (laughs) Listen, that that can happen to anybody, man. You never left your social security card at the scene of a rape. Yeah, you had yeah, no, but you've done that. <laughs> oh, you said once. Okay, yeah, yeah, once, <laughs> yeah, once. Yeah. But the, uh, but yeah, like I said, there was a reason they picked him. It wasn't like he was just, you know, hey, there's a black guy. Let's get him. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, so yeah, yeah, that makes sense, man. Because it's like they always leave so much out, and 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 they always talk so weird. It, the things they say are always so weird. Like, yo, if, let, man, accuse me of rape, man. What, man? The fuck, man? Man, the fuck up, man, motherfucker. I ain't do that shit, man. What, rape who? What the fuck did you talk?